So in short, a complete planner will always find a solution to the planning problem when one exists or indicate failure in finite time. The interesting part here is finite time and it's always uh, also that it finds a solution or exits. So those are the three main parts to the completeness of a planner. We can show that the uh, bug one algorithm is a complete planner by proving these two lemmas that will in turn prove the theorem. We'll go into each of them uh, in just a minute. But first, let's go through what it is that they say. Lemma one says, when the bug leaves a leave point of an obstacle, then the bug never returns to this obstacle again. And lemma two says that the bug only meets a finite number of obstacles. This, uh, as we will see, shows that the algorithm terminates in finite time. Then finally, the theorem that bug one is a complete path planning algorithm uh, says that it'll find the path to the goal when a path exists or terminate with failure if there's no path to the goal and all of that in finite time, just as I just described with the completeness. So the first lemma, when the bug leaves a lead point of an obstacle, then the bug never returns to this obstacle again. We can prove this by saying that the bug visits a sequence of points from Q start to the hit point of the first obstacle to the leave point of the first obstacle, then going from there to the hit point of the second obstacle to the leave point of the second obstacle, and so on until it reaches the goal, Q goal. So from this we can say that the distance uh, D from the Q hit point or the QHI, so that's the hit point of the ith obstacle to the goal, will always be larger than or equal to the distance from the leave point of the same obstacle to the goal. Because as by definition, the leave point is the point on the boundary that is closest to the goal, right? But we can even more so say that it is strictly larger or strictly greater than the distance to the, from the leave point to the goal because the hit point and the leave point cannot be equal. And this is because a straight line that is a tangent to the obstacle uh, doesn't require the robot to circumnavigate. That's a, that's a point of the bug one algorithm. If there is an intersection between the line to the goal and the object, then that line will cross the obstacle at two points, or as we'll see later in at least an even number of points. So also we can see that the distance from the leave point of the ith obstacle to the hit point of the i plus one obstacle. So that's the from, from where the robot leaves one obstacle and hits the next obstacle. Uh, the distance is strictly greater than uh, that, you know. So from the leave point to the goal is strictly greater than from the hit point of the next obstacle to the goal. And that's of course because the obst obstacles do not touch each other. If they did touch each other, then it wouldn't be a new obstacle. Right, so, so we can conclude all these uh, inequalities by saying that the distance from the start to the goal will be greater than or equal to the distance from the hit point of the first obstacle to the goal, which is strictly greater than the distance from the leave point of the first obstacle to the goal, which is strictly greater than the hit point of the second obstacle, and so on all the way down. And this is important because now we know that, and as I'll read it out loud. Since the distance from the leave point of the ith goal is the shortest distance from the ith obstacle to the goal, and since each new hit point is closer than the last leave point, then the bug cannot encounter the ith obstacle again. That means that once we've left an obstacle, we're not going to increase the distance to the goal, so we're never going to encounter that obstacle again. So that's a pretty long proof to say that we'll only visit each obstacle once, but it's important to, to say that this is a complete planner. The next lemma is not as involved, it's that the bug only meets a finite number of obstacles. And we can prove this by saying that the straight line segment from the i-th uh, leave point to the i plus one-th hit point, they're within the radius of the distance from the start to the goal, centered at the goal. 
So, so imagine a, a circle emanating from the, the goal point and out to the start. We, we can never have a straight line segment that goes beyond this radius. And that is because each hit point is closer than, oh sorry, it's closer to Q goal than the last lead point. We just saw that. But we also assume that any finite disk that can only hold a finite number of obstacles. So um, not, we, we can't have infinite number of obstacles. Uh, and that is an assumption that I think we can all accept that. But, but if, if we can accept that the bug only meets a finite number of obstacles and only meets any obstacle once, we can also say that the bug one algorithm will terminate in finite time. So we can go on to the theorem saying that the bug one is a complete path planner. And we can try and prove this by contradiction. So it'll be a, an incomplete planner if the bug one algorithm does not terminate in finite time. Or if there is a, sorry, if there's no path to the Q goal, but the bug algorithm still reports finding a path. Or if there is a path to the goal, but it incorrectly reports that there is no path. If any of these three th things happen, then uh, it cannot be a complete path planner. So, so we'll, uh, we, we'll, we'll see if, if any of those hold. So the first one, um, that it doesn't terminate in finite time, we just disproved that by lemma one and lemma two. If there's no path to the Q goal, but it finds a path, is that even possible? Well, as a definition of the algorithm, it never goes through an obstacle. So it'll only compute valid paths, which means that it'll only uh, compute path in the free space. And finally, uh, to show that it will not f incorrectly find a path um, or incorrectly not find a path if there is a path to the goal, we can say that this will only happen, it will only say that there is no path to the goal if when it uh, encounters a leap point or when it gets to a leap point and it immediately crosses into an obstacle or hits the obstacle again, then it will report that there's no path. But we can say that there is a path to the goal, right? That was just the thing that we know that there's a path to the goal. So, so the Q goal cannot be encircled by an obstacle. We also know that the direct line from the hit point to the obstacle will cross the obstacle an even number of times. Also, um, if, it cross, if it hits the obstacle an even number of times, there must be another intersection point that is closer to the goal if we were to to hit the obstacle when we go to when we go towards the goal, so the bug must have encountered this other intersection point when it was circumnavigating the obstacle. So that contradicts the definition of how we define leap points, which means that the third point in our proof, contrary proof, doesn't hold either. And by that, we actually have proven that the bug one is a complete path planner. So that's a long way to go just to say that this is a complete path planner, but it's very nice to know that our planner will never report a, a wrong path. Now let's discuss the performance of the, uh, the bug one and the bug two path planners, because the bug two path planner seems to be a more efficient path planner. It doesn't take all those circumnavigation steps. To compare the performance between bug one and bug two, we need to define the distance function. We actually just saw it uh, in the proof of uh, the completeness of bug one, but the distance function is actually uh, just the norm from the position X to the position Y. And if we put it in to the distance function Q star to Q goal, this is, this is the, the distance from, from the goal, which is the triangle to the robot, which is uh, the green uh, point. The bug one algorithm and bug two algorithm has this inequality to the distance. So no matter how um, few uh, obstacles, well, if there's actually no obstacle in the way of the robot, uh, it can the, the distance of the path that bug one and bug two uh, makes cannot be any shorter than the direct distance from Q star to, to Q goal. But then we also have a number of obstacles. 
and we define the number of obstacles that intersects this disk that's defined by uh, d start or the distance function from q start to q go, q go. So all of those that intersects that disk, that's the number n, right? So so the perimeter. Um, sorry, the uh, we also had one obstacle up here, and that disappears because it's not in the disk, and it does we, we don't consider it uh, in in this performance metric. So p is the um, perimeter of each of the obstacles. So pi is the perimeter of the ith obstacle. And in order to 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 see that the um, the the Bog two algorithm. Uh, how that compares to the Bog one algorithm, we're also defining the number of intersections between the obstacles and the robot. In this case, the robot intersects obstacle, let's call it two, four times. So we know from the Bog one algorithm that it that it'll traverse the entire perimeter of each obstacle. So so the distance function uh, will be increased by at least one perimeter. Let's let's imagine that the Bog one algorithm that we uh, make also considers whether it should turn left or should turn right once it has circumnavigated the obstacle to go back to the leave point. And if it always decides to take the shortest route, uh, route to the leave point, then we cannot have a, a traversal of each of the obstacle of more than three halves or one and a half uh, of the perimeter. The Bog two algorithm, on the other hand, uh, will at most circumnavigate the perimeter once, uh, saying that it hits the, an obstacle and then it chooses to go left or right, but it chooses wrongly, so it'll almost go all the way around the perimeter. Right. So in the case of the bottom right hit uh, on the obstacle, here we see that the two hit points are very close, but if the robot chooses to go the other way around, it'll go all the way around the perimeter. But the amount of hit points is four in this case, but it'll only go around the, the, the perimeter twice because one is a hit point, the other is a leave point. And therefore, we'll get the, the limit of half of the number of hits times the perimeter of the obstacle. And in that sense, we can see that the two uh, algorithms compare in performance in different ways. So if there's a lot of intersections to the M line, of any obstacle, that is that the obstacles are very complex uh, and has a, a maze kind of structure, then the bug one algorithm is actually better because it'll, it'll traverse the entire obstacle once and then it'll find the best place to, to leave for the goal.